Shane, thanks for sitting down with us. I wanted to talk to you about the PACT Act and what you're hearing from veterans right now. Obviously, this was very expansive uh, legislation for toxic exposure, um, new benefits, new research, lots of different things. What, what are veterans calling DAV about right now? What are, they, what are they reaching out in terms of questions and in terms of you know, what, what they want to see and, and what they're hearing? Well, I think a lot of it really comes down to is most veterans aren't sure if the PACT Act is applicable to them. So mm -hmm. that's what we're getting a lot for the inquiries up front because we're using the terminology PACT Act so much but not saying burn pits or Agent Orange. So I think there's a little disconnect on what does it mean. So we're getting lots of questions about that. Then we're also filing a lot of claims once we uh, discuss with them what they may be eligible for and, and assisting in that process. What we're also hearing is certain issues that they believe aren't covered by the PACT Act, but maybe should be. Uh, we're getting responses in reference to Fort McClellan, but we did let them know that Fort McClellan was a part of the PACT Act, not as a presumptive, but part of a study that they're gonna do epidemiological research on to determine if there's any connections. So basically, what we're hearing the most is, does this apply to me and what exactly do we need to do? And I, I've actually gotten a lot of emails from veterans on that saying, hey, I have this specific case, I served here, I served there, is this covered? What, what are you telling folks in general? Because I know part of the PACT Act was supposed to be really a, a whole scale re-examination of how VA handles these kind of toxic exposure cases. So are you still telling folks, hey, you should talk to VA, you should be going in and at least, even if it's not specified in there, you should be, you should be having a conversation? Yeah, we're advising them, if you believe you have a claim, file the claim, right? VA is going to be the ones making the decisions on it and not us. So we're just helping them understand the process, how long it may take, what may be required. So that's what we're hearing from them and what we're responding with is, here's what's all involved. And if this does apply to you, let's file the claim. If you believe it file, uh, applies to you, we'll file the claim anyway, just to make sure you are getting that to the VA and make sure that it gets addressed. Okay. Burn pits was, was really one of the big headlines here. As you said, there's a lot of different uh, conditions and, and situations that were covered, but burn pits has been the one that, that you guys have been fighting, that the entire veterans community has been fighting for a while. So how, how does it work for you to sort of shift the mindset from, you know, we've got to fight for these benefits to now, oh, oh my God, goodness, we have these benefits, now we've got to make sure that folks are getting them. Well, in you're right, we have been fighting for this for a very long time. So it, once it was passed, it felt very surreal because now it's this whole shift of let's get DAV's national service officers and service officers across the nation informed and ready and prepared to make sure they're putting out the right information and advising veterans and their families on how to file the claim and do it in an inappropriate way. So we know our offices, DAV created a uh, PACT Act site on our website, a page on information on what to know what to do. We've also done information seminars around the country where our service officers are out in the field providing this specific information for veterans to make sure they understand it. But you're right, it, it was a little bit of a shift at first going from fighting to advocating. And now it really becomes to getting into the weeds as far as they advocating for it for their benefits because they did add essentially 23 conditions, 20 of them were, were basically cancers. And so part of that is, well, what cancers? The, the law itself said cancer of the head and neck, cancer of the urological system. What does that really mean? So well, we've been asking those questions. The VA just put out guidance in uh, the end of December on what conditions do impact and what don't. And we've even heard some of our uh, veterans being denied some of those conditions prematurely before that came out. But now some of those issues are being addressed. They're taking a look at all of those because prostate cancer is considered one of the presumptive diseases under the PACT Act for burn pits. And this, just, just, to cut, just to be clear, the presumptive diseases mean if someone who served in Iraq or Afghanistan in areas that are presumed to have burn pit exposure, if they contract one of these cancers or respiratory illnesses, they're covered now. They can get disability benefits. They can get health care coverage. That's correct. If they meet the requirements of uh, the eligibility for being at those locations or with the certain metals, they're considered exposed. And then if they have one of those many diseases, they would be eligible for disability benefits and health care if it's service connected. But what the PACT Act also did is it extended health care to veterans who were exposed to burn pits that may not have been eligible previously. Okay, so, so all that said, 
now what comes next? Obviously, you're going to watch the implementation, but um, is this it? Is there still more to be done in terms of you know uh, benefits and and care for for burn pit folks, or was everything covered in this bill? Not everything was covered in this bill. Uh, again, as we said, it's the most comprehensive toxic exposure bill ever. However, there are some gaps, uh, and it's not just about burn pits. I mean, real quick, we'll talk about K2 veterans. Mm -hmm. Uh, K2 Veterans is, makes reference to uh, Karshi Kanabad, the base in Uzbekistan that the U.S. used from 2001 to 2005. It was a former Soviet base. We were using that for four years to jump into Afghanistan uh, after 9-11. Po after what they have determined is there were several hundreds different types of toxins there to include petroleum in the ground, to include uh, uranium and cyanide found in the showers. So those toxics aren't covered by the PACT Act. They are included as burn pits. So they're recognizing Uzbekistan as a location for burn pits. So they're covered for cancers related to that, but they're not covered for any condition specifically related to those unique exposures at K2. That we are addressing as one of our critical policy goals for the upcoming year is to close that gap to make sure K2 veterans are getting covered for everything, not just exposure to burn pits. Shane, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Leo.